Welcome, Julie. I am so glad that you are here today. And I cannot wait for you to share with everyone what's working really well in your business right now. Thanks so much for having me, Tanzan. Um, where would you like me to start? Well, I have to say, I love the idea that you came up with in Story a Day because before I ever wrote books, I always felt like there was a book in me, but it always felt too big, like where to go. And I think you just making it like attainable, like something easy to do that, you know, I think sharing people how you came, how you came up with the idea, how you have put it into action and what it's become. Yeah, I started off, I think like most people, um, you know, you start off with a job and you learn some stuff and then maybe you have a family and life changes. And I got, you know, I was staying at home with my kids. So, uh, you know, that absorbs you, as you know, that that takes a lot of time and attention. And then um, when they went to school, I I thought I was going to have a lot more time than I, I did. And um, I was just, I was frustrated, you know, I wasn't, I was kind of losing myself in that role. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people go through that and it, it doesn't have to be with kids. It can be with your job or, you know, whatever you're, or you can, you know, if you've got a business, you can lose parts of yourself. So I wanted to make sure that I was uh, getting back to creativity and I, <laughs> because I couldn't even manage to write a single story and finish it. I decided that writing a story every day for a month was the obvious solution to that because I like a challenge and I told a few friends and they told a few friends and like 97 people signed up and went sure I'll do it too so uh I was like okay I guess we're doing this thing and uh so I started off just doing it to kind of claw back some time and creativity for myself mm -hmm. and I just discovered there was this huge community of people out there who'd always wanted to write but for whom it seemed too big like you were saying and I think I've, that was back in 2010 that I started this and I thought that I was just helping people to write stories mm. but turns out this is so applicable to everything that we do you know everything worthwhile seems like a massive overwhelming challenge it's mm. uncomfortable it's it's easier to stay where we are the thought of doing anything seems like this massive thing that you're biting off and I'm I say to people start and finish a story every day and what that does for a month. So you've got this time limited challenge. I'm just, you're just going to focus on this and you're going to figure out if you can make time for your creativity for a month. And uh, as I talk to people in all kinds of different fields, I realize it's the same for everything, like building a business. You know, you, you put limits around the challenge and then you lower the bar. Because like if you, um, if you, if you sort of say you're going to write a story every day for a month, they are not going to be great and they're not going to be long and they don't have to be masterpieces. In fact, they really can't be. And what I find is that when you lower the bar like that, you know, some days you're going to write a Twitter length story because you're just mm -hmm. wrung out, but you've made the commitment and you've done it in public and you've told people that you're doing it. So when it comes to that and you're like, OK, all I have to do today is write 100 words or 140 characters I can manage that. And that just keeps the momentum going and it keeps you seeing yourself as a person who is a writer or an entrepreneur or a person who's building a business or a person who gets fit or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, and just, you know, having the community to lift you on days when you're not feeling it or to like ping you and say, hey, I didn't see you today. Are you, you, know, you okay? Mm -hmm. Um all of these things are so transferable um, throughout life. And I always find that people who take part in the Story A Day Challenge, obviously some drop out, uh, some flame out dramatically and uh, email me to say, I completely failed your challenge and it was glorious because I learned this, this and this. And I'm like, awesome. You know, maybe they learned they didn't want to write short stories and they love writing novels yeah. or maybe they, you know, they learned something and some people stick with it all through the month and they come out of it and they're like, you know what? I didn't write 31 great stories. They say kind of apologetically. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, they go, but I have maybe eight that I think I want to do something with. And then I have people in my community who have had stories published in magazines and publications and stuff. And in fact, one of them tells me every time she's like, every story I've had published every time she gets an acceptance, she's like, it's another story that started out a story a day. This wouldn't have been written unless I'd been in this challenge. 
I love what Julie said about setting specific limits and lowering the bar. What is a challenge that you've stuck with yourself? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, that was a lot, but um, that's how I got started. It's why I got started and it's why I keep going because seeing that, um, just that progression yeah. of myself and others over time, because it's so easy to quit. So seeing the progression and having other people around to keep you honest is very encouraging. And uh, I'm not sure if that answers the question, but that's totally. what's going on here. <laughs> totally, totally, because it's, you know, I love when you, you know, you say you lowered the bar because I've learned that anyone that has an idea or thinks about things, we like to just raise that bar because we have such, we're up, you know, tend to be op fairly optimistic and, oh, this will be great. And it's when you don't want to create something that's rubbish, right? You're not setting out to create something substandard usually, but then you get paralyzed, right? No. And it was like, and I used to feel that if I lowered the bar that I somehow wasn't good enough. But what I realized is if I shifted that, just like you were saying, the consistency pieces, it's like, no, give yourself permission to start here. And the consistency, you know, like you're saying, people are like, oh, I didn't do it, this thing. It's like, keep, nobody told, nobody said, this is the story a day for whatever, you know. Yeah, write 31 oh, masterpieces in May. 31 masterpieces. Uh, no, that's not like, my tagline. <laughs> that's not, that's not the purpose. And that, consistency, that community, that I'm just going to show up and it doesn't have to be the best thing ever because I don't know about you, but I do not wake up with it's the best thing ever every single day. No, but looking back, you go, oh, yeah, I've got, like you said, I've got eight I can work with. I can see where these go and I wouldn't have uncovered them if I hadn't just said, I'm, I'm starting, I'm going, I'm doing, I'm, so it's. And that's something that comes up with writing a lot is that, um, and it, and it works for nonfiction, you know, people writing, um, marketing copy and people writing mm -hmm. staggering works of, you know, genius, the, the progression and the ideas and the creativity come when you're working. Like when you're thinking about it and it's all just like up here in the ether and you're like, oh, it's perfect. I don't want to write it down in case I spoil it. Mm. Yeah, it's not going to be exactly like this perfect idea, but the, the fabulous things happen when you actually start working on something, when you start implementing, when you put it into practice and you maybe you get a little feedback either from yourself or someone else and, and you're like, oh, okay all right. And then, you know, ideas connect and, and you get yourself stuck and you have to make the next choice. And it's only when you're actually doing it that that stuff comes about. I, I love what you said. It's beautiful up here in the ether. I'm just going to let it stay there. Like nobody can mess with it if it's up here in the, that, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. When you, when you bring it down, it, it gets messy. You have to work through things and make adjustments and make shifts. And I always find it, it always ends up turning out in ways that I didn't imagine. You know, for instance, this book that we decided to put together in my head, it was a beautiful idea way up here. I was like, nope, got to bring it down and implement it. And it got messy and it got delayed and it was like, took different directions and all this, but it's like, as it starts now coming together. So it's so cool because I never would have known your story, you know, that, okay, this is where she started. This is what she's doing. Um, and I mean, you've worked with writers for a long, <laughs> forever. Have you always worked with writers? Um, since I was in my mid twenties, yeah. So that's a while okay. now. <laughs> and do the writers know that they're writers, or do our do you sometimes have people that discover that they are a writer? 
There's two very distinct classes of people. Some who've always wanted to be writers, they tend to be the people who write less for a while because they, in fact, I would say, I would say both groups probably write as much as each other. The ones who are writers are intimidated because they want to be good. Mm -hmm. Um, The ones who don't consider themselves writers, but have something that they want to say, they have an experience or a lesson that they want to share or, you know, some message that they want to get out. And they come and they say, I'm not really a writer, but Mm. like, well, you're communicating fine with me. So I think you probably are a writer. You're just maybe like, you still have the voice of your fifth grade English teacher in there harassing you mm. about commas. Um, so there's there's those two different things. There's the the people who are in it, you know, because they love to read and they they love the art of it, and mm. and they have challenges with um, that thing about you know it not being perfect and smushing it onto the page and being okay with that. Whereas people, other people who come to writing a little later, tend to come to it for different reasons, mm-hmm. and they need they might need different things you know they might need a more of a copy edit or more of a Mm. developmental editor or something whereas the people who come to it for the art tend to need a little more um inner work you know like you can do this rah rah you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're you're not terrible um Mm -hmm. so yeah it's interesting um i i'm of firmly of the opinion that anyone anyone can be a writer you know they um it depends on what you're purpose is how that's going to shake out but I have a very good friend who I've been friends with for 20 odd years and uh, from the word go I we were working in a we were working with authors and we were doing a lot of content writing for the website at the time and um, and he would he kept saying I can't write I'm not a writer I'm not a writer and I would listen to him talking to people on the phone and then he would show me stuff that he'd written and I'm like you're good you're, you're great you know you're communicating clearly you're um you know your your words are good words <laughs> like what's your problem and then just recently he won an award for something he wrote and I'm like 20 years can I can I say it now I told you so <laughs> so I firmly believe and, and that was that was something he was writing from his heart something that like his his life experiences had taught him and that he needed to share to kind of shorten the the pain for other people Mm. so it came out um you know and he worked at it and crafted it and everything Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's somebody who doesn't think he's a writer who won Mm. an award for his writing so I think everyone who has something to share can do it in writing there's Mm -hmm. various ways to get into that you can do it you know maybe you dictate first maybe you handwrite first maybe you type first maybe you work you know do interviews with other people but nothing should hold you back from sharing your stories whether they're mm-hmm. fictional or, or non-fiction and uh you know everyone has a right to have a voice agreed agreed and if you don't share your voice you know there's not a lot of people that are going to share our voices for us so and I think what people don't necessarily I think we're starting to understand this now in a, in a wider context but it's it's very clear from um sociology and psychology that the way we learn is through story Mm. you don't convince anyone with facts we learn through emotion and then we go looking for the facts to support our opinion that has formed through our emotions and so storytelling and connecting with characters and and, and being able to put yourself into somebody else's shoes Mm -hmm. is hugely important so I, I always want people to understand that if they're connecting with people on an emotional level at all they don't need to write a five-point essay and that's not Mm -hmm. you know that's not going to do much Mm -hmm. so it's it's so true now your challenge where people is that typically where they tend to start their journey with you is through your story a day challenge yes um I have a, a blog and a website so they, they can come there for, you know, writing prompts. It tends to be, I tend to work with people there who are doing creative writing, but there's also a lot of people who've got like memoir and stories of their okay. lives to tell. And, and people who whose day jobs are in, you know, copywriting and, and technical writing, but who still have that like uh, in, in their soul somewhere where they're like, mm-hmm. I, I got into this because I love to write and I'm not giving it any time so they tend to wander into my world and then I encourage them to make that space so they tend to come in either through the blog or the podcast and and we'll talk about uh, I I do writing prompts and and articles Mm -hmm. there 
But the challenge happens in May. It's quite well known within the writing community now. Um, so there's that. Now is and I also is have it a free a, challenge or a paid challenge? It is a free challenge. And okay. um, I kept it that way for about eight or nine years. And then I realized that the people who were sticking with it and turning up every day were getting so much more out of it. And so I introduced a sort of second tier. So there's still all, there's still 31 prompts on the website every May, um, every day they come out. But if you want to step up into the community more, there's a, there's a paid version of the challenge where I do more content, I do more pep talks. And, and then it grew into being a real community. So we have a Slack work, workspace that we hang out in. Mm-hmm. Um, we, and then when the pandemic hit, we started doing this. So last March, I just, everything was up in the air and kind of like everyone was like, yeah! and we were already doing this once a month. We were getting together and we were actually doing writing yeah. sprints on Zoom, which sounded crazy then, but everyone now knows what that's like. You know, you get on the Zoom call and you work with people in silence mm-hmm. and you do kind of like little breaks. And so we start, I start, I said to people like, since nobody's leaving their houses, let's do this. So I opened it up to the entire community and every day for two and a half months I just woke up every morning turned my computer on and, and welcomed in whoever wanted to see faces and yeah. sit and write yeah. so we did that and and that's the thing I was going to say I mean the topic of this this interview you said was like what's working now mm-hmm. and what's working now is connection I mean just connecting so you say you know how, how do people come into my world and for the first eight years it was all really on that website okay. when I opened it up to zoom calls and to I, I introduced a three-day challenge that people can do which has a little sort of guided um today we're going to work on you know this part of the story tomorrow we'll work on this part of the story and at the end of it I offered people a 15 minute interview with me where they could just let me know how it went we could do a little laser coaching Mm -hmm. and that was huge just the difference in the level of connection and the level of commitment to people to their writing Mm -hmm. and they would get back in touch with me a month you know whether or not they joined my superstars program which is the the more intense membership program gotcha just that level of having talked to me face to face a month later they might email me and say I'm still going strong you know or like when are you opening superstars again because I'm starting to slack off so Mm -hmm. Any level of, of personal connection seems to be really big now. And because people are so much more used to being on Zoom and uh, I mean, a year ago, this trying to get somebody on, ca- especially writers who are introverts, trying to get somebody on camera with me was like pulling teeth, getting them on the phone was bad enough. And I'm, you know, I'm fairly introverted as well. So I'm, I, was, I would default to emailing people or texting yeah. people, but um getting on camera and talking to people and making that personal connection. And it was the same for me when I came into your world. Mm -hmm. And the great thing, if I can say that about COVID, if there's anything that we can say that's positive, is that talking about lowering the bar again, people don't expect or really want slick anymore. They, you know, scrappy is fine. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, this is, I'm, I, I didn't, you know, I've got makeup on today. I've got the nice necklace on, but this is not how I always turn up on camera anymore. Mm-hmm. And a year ago, I wouldn't have dared like turn the camera on on my computer unless I'd had the whole, you know, and I get up, I've got my Coke bottle glasses and my hair pulled back in the morning and I turn on my camera and we're all just like morning and we start writing. And it's been awesome. And people are, you know, now when I see a slick marketing video from somebody who's a solopreneur, I'm like, I don't know if I trust you. How many hours did you spend trying to do that? Right. What? How many people could you have helped in that time? Right. Exactly. By just going it's, live or something. Oh, it's so true. And yeah. I, I'm with you. There are there are so many silver linings that came out of COVID. So many. And oh, it's a readjustment. Is it was a stripping away of what was unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And when you take things right, I mean, nobody chooses to do that because it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. But when you take it all back down to what's necessary, it just comes back mm-hmm. to connection and and mm-hmm. supporting each other. And um, yeah, there's definitely been, you know, without wishing to sound insensitive to all of the bad right. things that have come along, there have been, you know, you can find some silver linings here. I, I totally agree. And as I tell my kids all the time, when we find a positive, it doesn't make the negative go away. It doesn't make the hard 
go away. It doesn't make it any less of what hard, but it helps us find, okay, this is hard, but this is really good. And I'm with you. You know, I've been doing this online world since 2010 also, and have spent, what, 11 years trying to tell people that you could connect with people on video that you've never met, but you feel like you've known them your whole life. And I would get the, yeah, whatever. And thank you, global pandemic, because in less than a month, like from middle of March to middle of April last year, suddenly everyone in my entire outside of Zoom world knew what Zoom was and were, and were discovering places that, and people they could have never met or connected with. And it's huge because I, I'm with you. I mean, you know, I've, I mean, I've built a business that's heavy on connection because I think it's so important and you're right. To bring it around to story again, I mean, that's the, what, you know, the way you talk to your kids, you're like, it's, it doesn't, looking at it this way doesn't negate that way, but mm -hmm. the stories that we tell ourselves shape where we want to go and where our eyes mm -hmm. are and what we're, you know, what we're aiming at. Mm -hmm. So I choose to, um, I choose to look for the good and mm -hmm. to uh, try and drag as many people along with me as I can <laughs> up my optimism hill. <laughs> I mean, just thinking of stories, like it just popped in my head, all good stories usually have, there's an inner turmoil, there's a struggle, there's a, like, there's always something. Because if we read it from front to back and it was just one big, perfect lollipop rainbow. You wouldn't read it all. We wouldn't read it all, would we? Like the, we the struggle is, yeah. You can write a beautiful scene with beautiful description. And a lot of people worry about this, that their writing is not fancy enough. Mm -hmm. But that's not, you know, I mean, there's some terrible, uh, terribly written books that you can't put down because the story because the writer knows how to tell a story. And right. story is built up of um, conflict and challenge and resolution and growth. And, uh, and you know, that's that's how we live. And you can't you can't stay the same. You, you constantly, your story is constantly being rewritten mm -hmm. and it's not always as neat as fiction. That has to be a little more tidy in, unless you're writing experimental fiction. Um, but if you want a big audience, you know, it needs to be a little more sensitive and, and things need to work out in the end, the way that people expect them to. But yes. uh, life doesn't always work like that. But we, we, that's why we read, we read fiction so that we can prepare ourselves for the, um, it's a safe way to experience challenges that mm. we have not lived through. And there's actually been a lot of neuroscience done on this. We can't. And, I and it, never we, thought about that. And you are absolutely right. It's yeah. I mean, you, you, you want to know it. what it's like to live through a revolution. You read tale of two cities or, you know, we probably right. read something, you probably read uh, um, hunger games instead, but mm. um, you know, it's, it's a way of us learning and sort of preparing ourselves for adversity. Uh, and they actually have shown in um, MRI labs that when you're, your brain can't really differentiate between what you're experiencing empathetically as you read a book mm. and what you experience in real life. So that's why, especially at this moment in time, I'm so excited that people are actually reading um, print sales were up last year, digital uh, lending was up. And right at the moment when the publishing industry is finally figuring out that people want diverse books, which is coinciding with an interesting moment in history. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sales of, of, of books from diverse authors was also up last year, which means that we're putting ourselves into lives that we could never live. And that's always what you're doing with writing, with reading. Mm -hmm. um, like my 15 year old had to read, my 15 year old son read a book called uh, With the Fire on High, which is set in Philadelphia. And it's a girl who's um, Caribbean and well, she's Puerto Rican and half black, half Puerto Rican. And she's, you know, got a, a, a kid and she's still in high school and she wants to be a cook and he tore through that thing and I'm sitting here thinking good for that teacher you know because now he he's yes. never gonna not have empathy for someone his age walking down the street with a you know who's a different color from him who's walking down the street with a pram you know with a, a buggy right. so 
Um, yes. So we, we really do. We experience, and it's the same, even with, if you're telling stories from a business perspective, you're talking about a client or a success story, the person listening is experiencing those emotions that, that, you know, the pain of, of not having the thing and the, the success and the high of making that transformation. Mm-hmm. And your audience is going through it with the character or the case study that you're mm-hmm. talking about. And your brain doesn't know the difference. So story, I'm just going to say, <laughs> is really important. I, it, it's so important. And it, it's one, it's a skill I struggle with because, because, I'm, I'm, I can be a very analytical, like a very analytical part of my brain. My husband is great. Like he can take 30 minutes to tell a story. And sometimes it drives me so crazy. I'm like, okay, this is what he's like. You're telling the story. I'm like, I know, but sometimes I just need you to get to the point. So it's something that my kids are actually teaching me because in le- I can kind of learn through them and through their stories. Like it's something I want to be much better at doing because my tendency is like, oh, you should do this and this and this and this, and that's great. And I think that's, you know, I, I think the education system's got a little, I think probably when, I mean, I think you're a little younger than me, but you know, going through school, those things tended to get separated out a lot. You were either arty or sciencey. You were Absolutely. either analytical or not. And it's it's a false it's a false um, division for so many reasons because of, you know, what I was talking about and what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's also just that, like, are scientists not allowed to be creative? Are lawyers not allowed to paint? You know, is, is we need, if you watch kids playing, I mean, we're, we're creative. And when we do these things for fun, like I'm not telling people they need to go out and become professional authors. I'm like, no, write some stories. It's fun. It's fun. You can be a professional author if you want, but should be your t-shirt write some stories <laughs> fun <laughs> listen to me no <laughs> do what julie tells you <laughs> oh no it it it's so true because i was bra- i was branded you're the science and math person like you're over here i jumped through the hoops but i was definitely branded moving up through the educational ranks. And I'm sorry, I think creatives need thrive when they have some structure and structure people thrive when they're creative. So let's blend it all together, help each other, which ironically enough comes back to connecting um, because it's what works. Yeah, and that's, I, I know, you know, when we were talking earlier about, you know, when you're actually doing the work, that's when the creativity comes out. But I've also found that even for something that seems as solo as writing, when you do it with other people, when you get mm. into like feedback or or when you're working, you know, in a community like you've got here, it you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. Um, anyone can say something to you and you're like, oh, that's a really good point because they bring their life experiences and their just their interests and everything. So when we get into community, it just enriches everything that we do. And that's spoken as a card carrying introvert. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, is there, is there something you would like to leave the audience with today? I would like everyone to try and write a story. And I've got a little framework, which I'll say, I'll, I'll share with you and you can share a link to it. And it's the reason I want them to, I want people to do that is not because I think they're going to write a story that's going to get adapted into a Netflix movie and they're going to become millionaires. Great if you do, <laughs> but just to play, right? To get that sense of play and to remind yourself that, yeah, you can tell stories and that there's an audience out there who's listening. So this framework that I'm, I have, uh, I call it the short story framework, and it's got um, it's got a little kind of like Mad Libs thing that people can go through, which just teaches you how to get from an idea to starting the story to getting through the middle, which is where most people kind of get lost because it gets complicated in the middle. That's the point of a story. It gets complicated in the middle and then we have a resolution at the end. Mm. So this little Mad Lib thing takes you through a little formula 
for getting your idea, developing your idea into an interesting story that will interest a reader, and then figuring out how to put an end on it. And I, I just, I would like to challenge everyone just to try it and just to write a story and um, about anything. It could be about, you know, going to the grocery store and something interesting can happen. It doesn't have to be, because I could go off on a big lecture here. I'm not going to. (laughs) Well, because, you know, going to the grocery store is a universal experience. And then something very, very personal could happen, which makes, you know, or an external conflict with somebody who's fighting you for the last banana could happen, or an (laughs) internal conflict could happen where you're, you have a sudden memory about, you know, going to the store with your grandmother. Mm. And people often seem to think that they need to write important stories but what's more important than just everyday life? So I would like to challenge everyone to download the framework, fill in the, the blanks, and then just set yourself a timer for 40 minutes and just try and get through from beginning to end. Have some fun. Um, just remind yourself what it's like to play and be creative. I love that. And I will take you up on your challenge because I learn the most from the most mundane everyday activities and usually they come about you know when I'm watching the kids play or the kids doing something I've learned more from Legos and trucks and I turn a story into one of the many many experiences of my very mundane life um at times feels that way but thank you so much I love this. I really, I love the part. I don't know how this never dawned on me before that fiction prepares us for events, like reading it, which makes total sense because that's why I enjoy reading and watching things. So um, you you. think about, you know, when you read to your kids, right? They like to read the same stories over and over again because they're anticipating and they're like, oh, you know, it's it's we it's more it's more obvious in kids fiction they tends to have kind of a moral to it but it's mm-hmm. it's the same for for everything yeah people it, people need to read fiction it's so true like, fiction now has a very different purpose i can like 46 years i've never known this so you know when they have the meme i was how many years old when i learned this thing <laughs> there we go I was 46 when I learned that fiction could prepare me for things. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks. This was a blast.